Now the very first thing is keen to our baby. And we're just learning to be written. The very first thing of course you teach him is to go forward when you use your legs. And to listen to the legs. The next thing we teach him is to stretch. And we teach the horse to stretch into the bit. So This is the very first thing we teach our babies. Generally, if I'm breaking a young three-year-old or two-year-old, I teach them this on the lunge line. We lunge them our side reins or draw reins, and we teach them to stretch so that when they feel the bit, they stretch into it. And the reason this is so important is that you get the elasticity. You get the horse to the back. When he stretches, he uses, builds these muscles up. And you can always tell a correctly trained massage horse because these muscles are built here. And the muscles on the loins are built. If you look at a correctly trained horse, you'll always see these muscles built and these muscles built. And you can see, even though Keen's a thoroughbred, and when I bought him as a three-year-old, he had a unit, like a typical thoroughbred off the track, and he had his spine sticking way up here. Well, this has all been built up, and it's built up by the stretching. And he lost all this because he was paralyzed for three and a half years, and we had to rebuild him up this year. And we did it, of course, lunging with the draw reins and side reins, stretching him down, and then riding him the same way. And the reason you take them down is to get these muscles so the horse can come up. And I warm that way every day. And then the next thing you do in warm up is large patterns. Like you see me do, you get the muscles bending this way. That's the horse's supple. And when I do a circle, I'm very careful to keep them filling out the outside range. You notice when he circles, the inside range can go loose. He'll fill out the outside range. Go the other way, I use the inside leg, fill out the new outside leg. He's bending off my leg. I get inside leg. The outside leg behind the girth, and I don't even need that inside rein to hold the horse hands off my leg. And it's not a strong leg, it's just an educated leg for the horse to learn to obey. Once we've warmed up with the horse stretching, then I can sit my trot, and you must use sitting trot, and say, all right, bring your haunches under and collect. And he's on his top line, he brings his haunches under, and gives me the collective trot. <laughs> now, the collective trot is not a shortened trot. The collective trot is more under, more thrusty, more bouncy, harder to sit, more powerful. A horse cannot do a collective trot if you ride like this. I saw a lot of people riding like that today. The horse falls apart, he falls apart, he starts falling on his shoulders. He has, they have to be pushed together. Again, not a strong leg, but a pushing leg. That's it. And the hip has to push. The hip has to say, use your back. Your hip is stiff, the horse won't use its back, and you lose the spring. Now, we also do a lot of gymnastics develop collection. Now, to make him soft, team can start out like today, he's really excited, which is his normal condition. <laughs> this is a typical thoroughbred hot horse. And I do a lot of soft. I never pull down with both hands. I'll bend him right. I'll bend him left. I'll bend him right. I'll bend him left. Making sure he's nice and soft in here and in his jaw. And he's chewing the bit nicely, which he should. And that nice white ball and all that. But I do that to the pinching. But I don't pull down with my hands because then I would shorten his neck and lose his back. Now to develop the collection, we have lots of exercises. The most important is shoulder in. If you watch on the shoulder in, watch how Keen right hind steps really under his body. And that is a wonderful exercise collection. And we use it also with the cannon. I do a lot of shoulder in at the canter on my horses. 
to teach him not only the cat is break, but it puts that hind leg way under the body. And it puts it under without shortening the stride, which I don't want to do. Well, it's a nice, active, round, bouncy camp. Or trough, whatever I want. Now, we start teaching him bending movements. First, through circles. And I always do a circle, never crossing the inside ring from my leg. Is. So both hands shift to the left, and I use my left leg. At the curve, my right leg behind. That same bending, it's the edge of shoulder in. Left leg at the girth, right leg behind. It's the edge of haunches in. Left leg at the girth, right leg behind. My weight stays left, because the weight has to be to the inside of the bend. Same age for half half. Left leg at the girth, right leg behind. My weight left. So the age for a bend, a corner, a circle, shoulder in, half pass are the same. You're simply my bending age. But the exercises have different uses. What does the shoulder in develop? Carrying the inside hand. In this case, the right. Can you see that? Haunches in develops bending. They don't carry that much. And the thing you might notice too, on a shoulder end, which legs cross? Which legs do you see crossing on a shoulder end? The front. If I do a leg yield, which legs cross? All of them. Oh, not the difference between the judge says you're doing a leg yield. See if you can tell me which one I'm doing. Right now, what is he doing? All of the leg That's leg yield. Now he's doing shoulder in. The leg yield is actually easier in some way because they don't have to bend. Same thing with the travers. With the proper travers, which legs cross? The hind leg. If I do a leg yield instead of a travers, which legs cross? All of them. And that's a total cop out. He doesn't have to bend. This is much more difficult to bend. So, a leg yield is always a cop out for bending. Now, in half pass, all a half pass is is a haunches in a diagonal line. If I do haunches in from the corner to C on this line, that's a half pass. But all the legs cross because I'm going sideways. So in half half, all the legs do cross because the relationship to the rail is different. But half half and haunches in are the same movement, same edge. This makes me miss you. Except that they're crossing oh. sideways. You can do all of them. Well, I'm John still will. training she level can't wait to learn Now, all <laughs> these movements develop suppleness. As we increase collection, and we make them sit more, we get... What movement's this? No. Yeah. No. That's a trot in place. Or a piao. See how he sits down? And that's maximum collection. Yeah. And the way I tell them is the age raw collection. I bring my legs back. When I bring my legs back, that tells him to lower his haunches and sit down. If I relax the legs back, I can ask for passage, which doesn't have as much collection. I get him to settle down and be able to morning, you'll all see your horses facade. <laughs> they love the facade. You'll almost never see them pee out. Because facade is nice and bouncy. They don't have to sit. Pee out, they have to sit. Sarah never straightens his hocks. This is extremely tiring. This horse happens to have effortless facade. Yeah. 
is real strength. Besides, he can do longer. If I get him to settle down, talk to him. Yeah, the rhythm doesn't change. She has a bounce. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you when, if you notice on the extended, he just sort of elevates the forehand. Mm -hmm. He's so powerful back here that he just gets real free. He doesn't go down with his head and neck and fall on his face like so many horses do. Extended at lower levels, we ask for lengthening, which are when he just lengthens stride. Now the horse becomes to higher levels. Then you can say, all right, thrust and go for it. And when he extends, he thrusts and goes for it. He doesn't go down like a man. Now, on the walk work, she would need to settle down and do. Um, the turn on the haunches is really a half pass. The way we teach it, when you guys get to the second level, we teach a half pass with the walk. First, we teach half pass at the trunk. You do it at the wall, we make half pass in a small circle. And then you simply, to get a good walk to it, you simply make that circle smaller. Until uh, uh, uh. we get the fill. That's a good old strawberry temper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There we go. When I reward a horse, I always reward on the inside rein and just stroke them. Because they're supposed to be on the outside rein anyway. So there's no difference. Now, the work at the canter is very similar in some ways to the work at trot. You don't have piaf with the trot. Instead of piaf, you have something we call school. But first we develop, we'll go back. My training level horse. Okay. This is our training level horse. Push him a little bit more together, first level. Push him a little bit more together, second level. Push him a little bit more together, third level. Push him a little bit more together. And each time I shorten my range, I push him a little bit. Fourth level. So this would be collected canter, which would be in about an FEI collection right now. Now, if I want to do a good downward transition, I do what we call school canter which is making him sit down. And then, of course, it's really Because if I want to come in, let's say third level test three, they want to halt on the center line. But you can't come in at this canter and have a pretty halt. Too fast. You slow the horse down, have what we call full canter, and halt. Now, I don't exaggerate it that much for the judge. For the judge, I come in nice collected, then go to school and haul. And it looks real smooth. Where if I went collected haul, it would look abrupt. And by the way, into a haul, when you haul from canter, you haul from cross, you have to rhythm. It's one, two, three, four. A lot of you guys go faster in your haul. You go one, two, one, two, one, two, haul. And a judge will always call that abrupt. Now, the age for collection are always the same. I don't drive more and hold more. You could never, if you drove this horse more and held him, he would simply put you off the saddle. But if I want collection, I simply have taught him when I let him go back. So I can sit here all day and not drive him hard. Because my legs are back. And he'll stay in the collection. Now, if they've learned that good school canter, 
is where they keep the hawk man, the caterpillar, that's a piece of tape. I simply hold the school camera and turn it. And caterpillar and walk and pee up are the two most difficult parts, carrying power behind. Because watch his hops and the caterpillar. Watch how they stay there. Mm -hmm. Now, the caterpillar, of course, is a half pass movement. The higher levels, we have great fun with half pass. In the Grand Prix test, they ask us to do three, six, 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 three. We call these big types for short. In the test, they try to take care of them. But it's real tricky. Want us to do half past one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three. And that takes a lot of control. No. Now, at the higher level, they also ask for flying changes. Now, flying changes, once you teach a horse their initial change, it's really easy. Because if you have a horse with a good straight canter, and he learns the regular canter to part eight, if I want to canter right, I simply put my left leg back, put my right leg at the girth, and with my hips, say, canter right. Now, I teach my horse that to a simple change. Hand or left, but same thing. Both legs, one at the girth, one behind in my hip. Now, when a horse has good simple changes and a fairly good collected canter, it's not too hard to say, all right, switch. And all I do is switch my legs. One stride before. So I switch, he switches. I switch, he switches. I switch, he switches. Once the horse has good control, change it. And I'm in control because if you hold any lead, I walk. He's well balanced, he's obedient. I'm going to do a six meter counter canter circle, fine. So I want to pull his head to the right. Fine. Head left. Fine. Head right. Fine. Head left. If I want to hold the counter knee, or shoulder in, use my left leg real strong to do a shoulder in. Fine. Because I haven't done all the eight together. You will only change leads if I put my left leg back, my right hip forward, my right leg forward. I can use this leg as much as I want. He's not going to switch. I can turn his head the wrong way. He's not going to switch. Eight. But he waits for all my eggs. Now when you have that, and they'll wait for you, then it's pretty easy to do tempting. I simply count. All right, I change. One, two, three, four. He changes the next one. I ate here. Fast four tempies. If I want to do three tempies, I count to three. I give the eight three. Three, I ate. I ate. I ate. I ate. I ate. I ate. Here. Better not be on the forehand, I'll never get him. I ate, he changes, 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 I ate, he changes. So we all can it. So we get to Now wives are very tricky. I take took me about two years to learn ones. I screwed two horses up before I taught him one. And if the other two up, they can never learn them. And it's because you're always sitting opposite. Because I just showed you. I showed you how we, I give the eight a stride before. Well, for one, I've got to give the eight a stride before. So when he's on the right lead, I have to tell him left lead. But before he lands on the left lead, I've got to tell him right lead. And before he lands on the right lead, I've got to tell him left lead. So I've got to be one ahead of him. And all I have, if he misses one, I've got to catch it back up. Naturally. Hey, you'll make I'm pretty good now. After 20 years, I have four horses that do ones at home. 
that I practice on every morning, I can keep up with him pretty well. So it's me change him, me change, so we're backwards. Looks real funny if you look at my age group of kids. <laughs> judges for him, that gets an eight. That same, if you show no difference for the extended, you get one point less, seven. Now if you show eight, 20 percent more, you get an eight to both. But not a collective one. So you have to show collective canter, medium canter. Now, most of the training, of course, I do on the sample. The exhibition we put on the double, but 
All my horses go much better on the snaffle than they do on the double. They prefer the snaffle. I prefer the snaffle. It's just rules make us use it. Any questions about anything we covered? Let's sort of give you an idea. <laughs> okay. It's, you can see why dressage isn't really boring. It's just boring getting the basics. But once you have the basics, horses fly. And also, I hope what you see is more than the tricks. I showed you a lot of tricks. But can you see the elasticity? And that the fact that the strides stay big and elastic and powerful. We're, these aren't... The horses... And there's two fields of dressage, really. There's competitive dressage and classical dressage, which is exhibition. And in competitive dressage, we use a different kind of horse because we're not just doing exhibitions in little arenas, in halls or at circuses. We have to be able to extend. Keen is also a very good jumper, and he's also won events when he was younger before I stopped jumping. But Kronos, the sign, he won a pre-St. George last weekend, the weekend before he was jumper champion and hunter champion at the Griffith Park A show, the winter classic. So then Kronos does pee off now in one tempi. The dressage and the jumping, the competitive dressage and the jumping go right together. All this kind of work does is make the horse more powerful, stronger. They tend to stay sound because they're built up. They tend to stay supple because you're bending them all the time. You're not letting them careen around on their shoulders. And you're making them use their bodies. And of course, they're much more obedient. And so they're better for jumping and they're better for eventing. When they get his level and they work as much as he is, I, you don't want to jump them too much. Kronos, I still jump because he's so strong and so sound. He keeps winning all these championships. But he and I stopped jumping when he was about eight because he got, he was, by then he won a Pan Am medal and I thought it was a little much to do both. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.